and uh, going many places and sometimes it's hard to find a minute to yourself but whenever I get a minute to myself it usually ends up with me picking up my guitar and you know playing a few songs because it, it kind of keeps me saying that's kind of my time to myself and I didn't I didn't actually plan on getting an album out this quick I, I thought it would, it would have been nice but I didn't think it would happen and then um, yeah it's just a few ideas I had came together and this album came together quite naturally I think. People have asked why is it called Shangri-La when I suppose a lot of the lyrical content and the musical content is quite dark and quite heavy in, in some areas. With the first album I was going through things that everybody else was going through where I was from. I could speak to people and you know they would understand. Whereas this time I've, uh, I've had experiences where you know a lot of people don't get to get to have and the only way I could like try and get those thoughts out and those, those dark things I was keeping inside was through my music. And so Shangri-La was a, a place for me where, you know, I, I could get it all out and you know, I could be at peace, you know, with myself. I mean, generally, uh, when I write songs, it's melody first, but I think if, uh, if you have an opportunity to tell a story and something you want to express and tell people, then why, why, why would you waste that opportunity? I, think. I make records because I love to make records, and if people want to listen to them, then that's brilliant. You know, that, that's, that's much more than I could ask for. Those people who go out and buy my records help me to live my dream. And if you don't want to listen to it, then you don't have to. No one's forcing you to. And I don't read my press. And you know, I, I, I appreciate constructive feedback, you know, whether it's good or bad. Uh, I think when I was about 14, I'd been playing guitar when I was about 12, and when I got to 14, I thought all these songs that I really enjoy playing, they've kind of, they, they've all been written by these people. And I thought, well, if I could, you know, if I could write songs, something that I really love doing, you know, help people in the process or make them feel good about themselves or you know to you know to bring out their emotions then you know that's that just sounds like the best job in the world for me i would have been 17 when i went for an audition with a, a festival called glaston budget which uh, was a tribute to glaston rin you know i went and uh, next day i got the email saying yeah sorry to inform you but we're not you won't you won't be playing at our festival and then the, the exact same day, the BBC rang and said, do you want to play on the introducing stage at Glastonbury? Which I couldn't believe it. I thought someone was having a, I thought someone was having a laugh, to be honest. And then I went and did the gig and it was, you know, it was great exposure, you know, there weren't that many people in the tent, I'll be honest, quite honest about that. But, you know, to be actually there and be, be part of it was great. And then in two years time, you know, not even, it didn't feel like, you know, I climbed because I would just end up on the main stage. It was like a jump really. It was brilliant, you know, it was, um, I really, I'm really thankful to all the people that have, you know, supported me from that, from that point. Mum, mum and dad, you know, they, um, they supported me. And, you know, my mum always kind of left me to do my own thing, you know, make my own mistakes and, you know, find what I wanted to do. I, I think if you're a parent and, you know, my mum was like to me, saying to me, make sure you practice your guitar, you know, then as a teenager, you, you know, your instinct is to rebel and say less likely to pick it up. But well, my mum never did that, you know, she always just let me do what I wanted and, you know, I'm very grateful for that. I played music until I was about 12, because my mum always played it and I, I was just into football, football, football. And then I started, and then I heard Don McLean for the first time, and then I looked at his influence like Buddy Holly and, you know, and like all those old rock and roll people. And then it was just like a big timeline. And even though I have a lot of older influences and some of this music's quite old that I enjoy, you know, my friends never really laughed at me for it. I think it's because they didn't know what it was. Not they thought it was like, you know, old or, you know, terrible. They just didn't quite understand what it was. And it was, I think, no matter how old a piece of music is, if you haven't heard it yet, then it's still, it's still new. You know, comparing to me to, to Bob Dylan, you know, I, I find, you know, it's generic, and it, you know, in some ways, I suppose it's quite lazy because, you know, I as I said, I don't read my own press, so, you know, the only reason I know about that comparison in, in particular is because people ask me about it um, quite quite a bit. And um, and no, don't get me wrong, I think Dylan's great, but you know, he's not the only person for me that can write good songs. And you know, you, you shouldn't ever to aspire to be anyone but yourself, I think. If I wasn't doing music, I, I honestly don't know. I'd imagine I, I would be packing boxes in a factory somewhere or, or something. Just before I got signed, I went for a couple of job interviews. Like, like apprentices and stuff, and they all turned me down. I don't know if it's because I look really tired in the mornings or whatever. And I, I remember one of them said, um, they said, what do you do? I said, oh, I play music, I'm a musician. 
and they said, uh, oh, well, well, maybe you should save your gigs for the weekend then, because you've got to be up quite early. I was like, no, nah, that's that's not going to quite happen to me. But um, so I really don't know. I've got, I went and did what I wanted to do, and I, and I did whatever was necessary to do what, to live my dream, and I'm living it. And I hope that you know that there are younger musicians coming through. I hope they. But at the same time, I hope they, you know, they haven't got Jake Bug haircuts or anything like that, you know, because it's a, you know, I hope that they're doing their own thing. I never looked at what was in the charts or what was doing well to see, oh, well, they're doing all right. So if I did something like them, then I might have a chance of getting signed. I just wanted to play the music I want to play. So I hope that, you know, it's a fine line between, um, you know, imitation and, you know, and being influenced, I think. Yeah.